Prepare to be captivated as we embark on an awe-inspiring journey through the cosmic realms, unveiling the enigmatic and mesmerizing story of stellar evolution. From the birth cries of protostars amidst vast molecular clouds to the celestial dance of main-sequence stars, and the epic final act that transforms mighty giants into ethereal white dwarfs, this extraordinary video reveals the hidden forces that shape the lives of celestial beings. Stellar evolution is the process by which a star changes over time. Depending on the mass of the star, its lifetime can range from a few million years for the most massive to trillions of years for the least massive, which is considerably longer than the current age of the universe. What powers a star? Nuclear fusion powers a star for most of its existence. Initially, the energy is generated by the fusion of hydrogen atoms at the core of the main sequence star. Later, as the preponderance of atoms at the core becomes helium, stars like the Sun begin to fuse hydrogen along a spherical shell surrounding the core. This process causes the star to gradually grow in size, passing through the subgiant stage until it reaches the red giant phase. Star Formation Protostar Stellar evolution starts with the gravitational collapse of a giant molecular cloud. Typical giant molecular clouds are roughly 100 light years, 9.5 x 1014 chem, across and contain up to 6 million solar masses, 1.2 x 1037 chem. As it collapses, a giant molecular cloud breaks into smaller and smaller pieces. In each of these fragments, the collapsing gas releases gravitational potential energy as heat. Brown Dwarfs and Substellar Objects Protostars with masses less than roughly 0.08 m, 1.6 x 1029 kg, never reach temperatures high enough for the nuclear fusion of hydrogen to begin. These are known as brown dwarfs. Main Sequence Stellar Mass Objects For a more massive protostar, the core temperature will eventually reach 10 million Kelvin, initiating the proton-proton chain reaction and allowing hydrogen to fuse, first to deuterium, and then to helium. In stars of slightly over 1 m, 2.0 x 1030, the carbon-nitrogen-oxygen fusion reaction, CNO cycle, contributes a large portion of the energy generation. Mature stars. Eventually, the star's core exhausts its supply of hydrogen, and the star begins to evolve off the main sequence. Without the outward radiation pressure generated by the fusion of hydrogen to counteract the force of gravity, the core contracts until either electron degeneracy pressure becomes sufficient to oppose gravity or the core becomes hot enough, around 100 mK, for helium fusion to begin. Which of these happens first depends upon the star's mass. Low-mass stars What happens after a low-mass star ceases to produce energy through fusion has not been directly observed. The universe is around 13.8 billion years old, which is less time, by several orders of magnitude, in some cases, than it takes for fusion to cease in such stars. Mint-sized stars Stars of roughly 0.6 to 10 m become red giants, which are large non-main sequence stars of stellar classification K or M red giants lie along the right edge of the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram due to their red color and large luminosity. Examples include Aldebaran in the constellation Taurus and Arcturus in the constellation of Boats. Subgiant Phase when a star exhausts the hydrogen in its core, it leaves the main sequence and begins to fuse hydrogen in a shell outside the core. The core increases in mass as the shell produces more helium. Depending on the mass of the helium core, this continues for several million to one or two billion years, with the star expanding and cooling at a similar or slightly lower luminosity to its main sequence state. Red Giant Branch Phase The expanding outer layers of the star are convective, with the material being mixed by turbulence from near the fusing regions up to the surface of the star. For all but the lowest mass stars, the fused material has remained deep in the stellar interior before this point, so the convecting envelope makes fusion products visible at the star's surface for the first time. At this stage of evolution, the results are subtle, with the largest effects, alterations to the isotopes of hydrogen and helium, being unobservable. The effects of the CNO cycle appear at the surface during the first dredge-up, with lower 12 c slash 13 c ratios and altered proportions of carbon and nitrogen. These are detectable with spectroscopy and have been measured for many evolved stars. Asymptotic Giant Branch Phase After a star has consumed the helium at the core, hydrogen and helium fusion continues in shells around a hot core of carbon and oxygen. 
The star follows the asymptotic giant branch on the hertzsprung russell diagram, paralleling the original red giant evolution, but with even faster energy generation, which lasts for a shorter time. Although helium is being burnt in a shell, the majority of the energy is produced by hydrogen burning in a shell further from the core of the star. Helium from these hydrogen-burning shells drops towards the center of the star, and periodically, the energy output from the helium shell increases dramatically. This is known as a thermal pulse, and they occur towards the end of the asymptotic giant branch phase, sometimes even into the post-asymptotic giant branch phase. Depending on mass and composition, there may be several to hundreds of thermal pulses. Massive stars In massive stars, the core is already large enough at the onset of the hydrogen-burning shell that helium ignition will occur before electron degeneracy pressure has a chance to become prevalent. Thus, when these stars expand and cool, they do not brighten as dramatically as lower mass stars. However, they were more luminous in the main sequence and they evolve into highly luminous supergents. Their cores become massive enough that they cannot support themselves by electron degeneration and will eventually collapse to produce a neutron star or black hole. Supernova When the core of a massive star collapses, it will form a neutron star or, in the case of cores that exceed the Tolman-Oppenheimer-Volkoff limit, a black hole. Through a process that is not completely understood, some of the gravitational potential energy released by this core collapse is converted into a type IB, type IC, or type I supernova. Stellar remnants After a star has burned out its fuel supply, its remnants can take one of three forms, depending on the mass during its lifetime. White and Black Dwarfs a white dwarf is very hot when it first forms, more than 100,000 K at the surface, and even hotter in its interior. It is so hot that a lot of its energy is lost in the form of neutrinos for the first 10 million years of its existence, and will have lost most of its energy after a billion years. The chemical composition of the white dwarf depends upon its mass. A star that has a mass of about 8 to 12 solar masses will ignite carbon fusion to form magnesium, neon, and smaller amounts of other elements resulting in a white dwarf composed chiefly of oxygen, neon, and magnesium, provided that it can lose enough mass to get below the Chandrasekhar limit, and provided that the ignition of carbon is not so violent as to blow the star apart in a supernova. In the end, all that remains is a cold dark mass, sometimes called a black dwarf. However, the universe is not old enough for any black dwarfs to exist yet. As we journey through the captivating story of stellar evolution, we witness the cosmic ballet that unfolds from the birth of protostars to the dazzling radiance of white dwarfs. This cosmic odyssey of immense forces, elemental transformations, and celestial life cycles leaves us in awe of the immense power and delicate balance that govern the cosmos. If you found our video informative, kindly subscribe to our channel so you won't miss out on our videos.